Hey everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel. Nathan, how are you doing today? <laughs> I still laugh that we have a YouTube channel. Sorry. Sorry. Fair enough. It is weird. <laughs> people do watch us. I don't know why, but people do watch us. Mm. Uh, it's rarely is because of us. It's because of what we're covering, which today, of course, is Mr. Harry Styles. We have enjoyed Harry Styles. We've we've reacted to all of his albums, live concerts. Check out our Patreon because there's things that are on our Patreon. If you're a Harry Styles fan and you happen to like what we say and do about Harry, mm -hmm. come to our Patreon because there's things on there that did not make it to YouTube because they got blocked and we can't help that block. Some mm -hmm. singing karaoke stuff, for example, blocked on YouTube. What else? Uh, Coachella blocked on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, good stuff. Okay, Nathan, this yes. one we're doing today. I have no idea what this is. All I know is from Celeste. She's the best. Uh, she's wonderful. We love Celeste. Like side note, we love Celeste. Nathan and I talk about her. We fantasize about her. We have dreams where Nathan and I are together. With I oh, know. Wait a minute, uh, Nathan. We love Celeste. Oh, we. <laughs> she, she's you know amazing. What? Rhymes with Celeste. Best. <laughs> Best it does, and you add one letter. <laughs> Bless. Darty, beat me to it. Shoot, come on. <laughs> then you take away one letter and add another letter. <laughs> Bless you. All right, take away three letters. Okay. <laughs> this is the worst. This is the worst one. We always All think we've right. like topped the last one, and this is the worst one. We're always well. It's actually always me. It's my fault. I'm terrible. All right, Nathan. Uh, I feel. I don't know what this is. The title of this video is Nardwar versus Harry Styles. <laughs> I'm serious. That's the title of the video. I wasn't making that up. Nard. Nard. Nardwar versus Harry Styles. <laughs> I I literally have no idea what we're watching. Okay. All right. <laughs> Hi, this is Harry Styles, and you're watching Nardwar's Video Vault. Nardwar! 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 Never heard of Nardwar. No. See, that must be Nardwar. Look at this guy. Okay. How does, he, how does Nardwar get Harry? How come... I know. How come we can't get Harry? Nardwar gets Harry. <laughs> All right, good for Nardwar. <laughs> I'm slightly jealous. You better win me over because I'm slightly jealous. All right, here we go. Who are you? Oh. I'm Harry. Harry Styles, welcome to Coachella. Thank you so much. Thanks for having oh. me. Harry, right after. Okay, this must have been when he played at Coachella. We did that concert. Remember, we, we reacted yeah. to his performance. So this must be some promotion. Like He's in town for Coachella, and he's doing some radio gigs or whatever. Nardwar. Nardwar. Good for him the bat i have a gift for you this started it all right elvis presley 1960 yeah how did this seven inch start it all this uh that's what she asked that's right this song the girl of my <laughs> the girl of he's my best laughing. friend he's laughing at the joke too he know he harry laughed at the seven inch there's no way why is he laughing <laughs> he, he's laughing at the seven inch <laughs> He heard my joke. He thought it was funny because I should be interviewing him. I think he's laughing. Was, he's uh, with no, he, oh, well, I think he's laughing at Narwar, but I think Narwar says seven inch in Harry. <laughs> of course, he's a guy. He went right to it. Uh, probably the first song I learned the words to. And uh, I used to sing it in my bedroom when I was a kid. And then uh, for my, I think my eighth birthday, I got a karaoke machine and you could record like tapes on it. And uh, oh, cool. I think this was the first song I recorded, The Girl of My Best Friend. Hmm. So there you go. That's for you. Thank you so much. This is the best interview ever. <laughs> and, quote, <laughs> tastes laughing. like strawberry. I don't know if Harry's in on the joke or he's laughing at or with. It's hard to say because Harry's got a pretty dry sense of humor, but he's cracking a couple of times here. Yeah. I, I haven't figured out who Nardwar is yet. That's the problem. I don't know what he is. So I don't know how to. pretty sure he's laughing at Nardwar. He's <laughs> on a. Summer evening. On a summer evening. And speaking of which, Fortune City. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's laughing. Uh, Fortune City was the, the Chinese restaurant that I grew up next to. 
Um, he's laughing. Yeah, I lived part. next door but one Not to at, a restaurant called funny. Fortune City. Yeah. Used to have like my birthdays there and stuff. And uh, I'd come home from school and I could always smell Chinese food every night. And it was maybe where my where my love for Chinese food comes from. Your mom's friend, Luis, makes good parsnips? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, wow. my mum's friend Louise grows parsnips, and um, they're huge. <laughs> so, well, obviously, Narwar is a character, which is fine. You remember? Uh, you probably seen Martin Short's Jiminy Glick. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. yeah same idea. So this is mm-hmm. it's it's a real interview, but it's obviously it's a character. It's a character. Narwar is not a real person, which is fine. Like. That's fine. It's, it's a gimmick. It's a character. There's, this isn't really... If it's really him, then wow. But mm-hmm. I think it's a character. What I like is Harry's find it funny and silly, but he's actually also answering the questions properly. Like, he's given the answer. Like, he's actually... Mm-hmm. So he's playing it straight, but he's laughing at the same... Like, he, yeah. He, <laughs> I mean, one Christmas, I think we fed, like, a whole table of people with, like, one or two parsnips. It was... It was uh, <laughs> yeah. Good parsnips. I do like parsnips. Tyler says no. Yeah. <laughs> Why does what? he say no? Um, Tyler says no. Is that a song or did we miss that one? Tyler says no. Do we know what that reference is? Anyone in our chat can help us with that, please. Okay, let's see what he says. Chat's just bopping. because probably he's a he's a stickler. He's a stickler for the rules sometimes. Oh, uh, it's probably just a made but up. We person. had a we had a tally in the studio of. Kind of like, you know, no, I, there's no ideas, no kind of bad ideas. Everyone can just throw out whatever. And anytime someone would say no to an idea, we had a tally of, you know, times people would say no. And Tyler by oh. far had the most no's. And you play guitar, don't you? A little bit. Gibson. Yes. And you have ideas <laughs> all the time, right? Sometimes. Well, I have a gift for you right oh. now. A special gift so that nobody can reject any ideas you have and it's in this bubble wrap. <laughs> it's, Thank you very it's much. It's an actual guitar pedal for your Gibson and check out the back where it explains all about it. It's from Satellite Amps in San Diego made from a transistor from the Ed Sullivan board. Wow. wow. That's a real gift. Wow. That's Darwar. He might be weird, but he's, that's quite the special gift he's given there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out Nardwar. Uh, well, he's a character. It's not real. It, it, it can't be. That's too good of a gift to come from somebody who might be handicapped. You know, that's right. it's a it's a real cool gift, but given via a character who's silly. But yeah. Mm-hmm. So all the bands that played on the Ed Sullivan show between 48 and 71 played through that transistor. There's only 30 in the world. They had a Fairchild board. It was cut up and the transistors were saved. And Adam from Satellite <laughs> Amps in San Diego made that. And it's a special, as you can see, Nardwar versus... Harry Styles. Harry Styles. What do you think about pedals? Very nice gift. Uh, no problem. Like, it's a fuzz pedal. I think possibly there's no way anybody could say no to the fuzz, right? What do you think about that? I don't think so. I think we can fuzz it up with this. There's no excuse to not fuzz it up. What sort of pedals do you have now? I don't really use that many pedals. I kind of like set them before. I don't do too much changing between songs, so I'm kind of just grabbing them. And I have a wired microphone that gets tangled in my in my pedal board so i kind of leave all my pedals like at the back was fuzz like add distortion is that the idea or yeah it was kind of the first term for distortion 70s distortion <laughs> don't i was, I, 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 I was also gonna say I know it's going. also <laughs> it's also what they refer to as 70s bush <laughs> i knew you were gonna say that it was like as soon as he said fuzz i actually thought no, I don't think Ryan will bring that up. No. No, oh, no, he won't do it. And then he paused it, and I was like, yep, here it comes. <laughs> Peach fuzz. Remember we, got we had 10 people watching this. Now we're down to six. <gasps> <laughs> oh, which is odd because they're patrons. They're people who are supposed to like us. 
<laughs> they were like, well, I'll just check in. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Yeah. No. Nope. I'm out of here. <laughs> Clutching their pearls as they leave. Yeah. So I'm sorry. <laughs> They're asking us to participate. Nope. I'm out of here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> say hi. Somebody please say hi. We'll, we'll, please. we'll put your hi up on the Let video. Us know that you exist. <laughs> oh, man. This I will be adding. For songwriting too, like in the studio. Yeah. Well, I I usually write on piano. I don't write too much on guitar. Oh, for uh, the tinkling, for the extra spice, the extra spice, right? Trivia. For the spicy fuzz, I will be using this from now on. Thank you, Adam, and thank you, Ed Sullivan. Harry, you love Canada, don't you? I do like Canada. Yeah. And Harry's nice. house, Joni's house, house, Joni Mitchell. Yeah. Have you oh, Joni's house. Yeah, Joni Mitchell. Is that Alberta? I believe it is, but I. So these are new names. I've seen these people. Hi, hi, oh. Been to her house? Um, I actually did. I did go to her house for a, like a. She had like a Christmas carol sing along oh, wow. thing one time, and I was I was invited by the wonderful Brandy Carlisle, and it was very fun. What did you sing? I said, well, I wasn't going to sing anything, and then um, Brandy kind of volunteered me to sing river which was one of the more mm -hmm. um that i know nerve-wracking moments of my life singing river in front of johnny mitchell but it was it was yeah wow. it, was, it was pretty special imagine if we had that on video that performance oh wow but there's just some things that they happen in the zeitgeist the people there get to witness and be a part of it and mm -hmm. nobody else yeah, and a uh, cell phone to witness it. No. Well, it's funny. We're on a walk uh, the other night with the family, and there's a beautiful sunset that was occurring. In my, it was just near the end of it, and I showed my daughter. I said, honey, look at that beautiful sunset. She goes, dad, get your cell phone. I said, no, no, just, just enjoy the sunset. Just mm -hmm. look at it, mm -hmm. enjoy it, and then we move on to another day. It's okay to not revisit it via a device. You can just enjoy this moment. Not everything has to be captured. Just enjoy it. Did and Becky then, record that interaction with her phone? <laughs> yes, and then we put it on uh, TikTok and uh, to, to, <laughs> to tell you how to be with your kids. Oh, I hate those people. Happy thoughts. Well, I have another Mitchell-related gift for you. A Chuck Mitchell LP from 1969. Her husband between 65 and 68. Wow. It was Chuck Mitchell. <laughs> it comes with a poster. <laughs> what do you think about posters? Like, it's got a great poster inside. What is your thoughts on posters in albums? I like a poster. Nice way to kind of add some extra artwork, um, creation of the album. Oh, this is fun. That's pretty cool, though. This I is mean... going up. By Chuck Mitchell. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe on the stucco. In very good condition from 69. Very good condition, actually. So some Chuck Mitchell to compliment to Joni Mitchell. Thank you very much for my Chuck Mitchell. <laughs> my first Chuck Mitchell experience. For Harry? Styles. For Harry Styles. <laughs> you did a Vine post once about a Harry doll. Do you remember that? A Vine post on a Harry doll. He did? Remember Vine? Vine was yeah, like the original Vine's TikTok. Essentially, yeah. they were like a tick. It was like fifteen seconds or something like that. They they had a yeah. time limit on them. I think <laughs> I never watched them when they came out. I, I, I'm a, I, I was aware kids. of them. Yeah, and I I thought this will never catch on. <laughs> for the record, I actually don't watch TikTok. I really don't. I have TikTok. Oh. We have it for our stupid channel, but nobody watches anything. So well, nobody well, likes occasionally, it. but it's it's so like random. The algorithm is very different from YouTube algorithm. And well, you called the doll kind of a bit creepy. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, yeah. I mean, for ah, like action ah, figures. Awesome. Are, they're, they're quite creepy, aren't well, they? I, I was curious, is this the action figure that you did a post so on? Always <laughs> hold the image on yeah, for that Yeah, I think one. it's something about uh, an action figure wearing, not, I mean, not an action figure, but a, a doll. The, hair, the hair's a little dark, but. All wearing three layers yeah. of clothing that creeps me out, maybe. You know? And you turn the head. The head can turn. All the way around. <laughs> How did they do, though? They did pretty good, didn't they? I think they did pretty good. Um, this guy's only got one shoe. But I think, yeah. Oh, sorry. I guess coming down from Vancouver. Might be in the back yeah. somewhere. I think they did all right. I think. I'm not really oh, is Nardwar Canadian? Is that it, Nathan? 
Is that why he's mentioning Canada? He talked about coming down from no, Vancouver. He's in Coachella. I know, but that's where he's at. He's at the event, but he's not. Oh, no, no, yep. I think Harry just came from Vancouver. Well, he <laughs> talked about, do you like Canada? And then he talked about bringing that thing from Vancouver. He's a journalist from Canada. So he's oh. visiting Coachella as a journalist oh. from Canada. He's a journalist, singer, keyboardist. He's a guerrilla journalist, often sneaking oh. into press conferences under the guise of an orthodox reporter to confront political leaders or other non-musical celebrities with surreal or confusing questions. <laughs> His non-Canadian political targets have included Gorbachev, oh. Gerald Ford, Dan Quayle. He's also targeted actor Christopher Glover. He's hmm. done it with Canadian politicians as well. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, he's still around. He's had a couple of health issues, but he's still around. But yeah, he is now at the age of 56. So he's not much older than us. About 10, well, how old are we? Well, this wasn't that long ago. Yeah. So he's noted for his excitable and eccentric persona. A typical Narbar interview will begin with, who are you, followed by from. I won't read this to you. Apparently, he ends an interview a certain way. We'll see if he does it this way. Okay. Okay. So this is Nar. So he's from Canada. I apologize for jumping down your throat. I apologize. Oh, well, sure. I think I was traveling a lot of the time, so I didn't. Uh, I didn't so stay too up to date on on the sales of. And you lost shoes traveling. I mean, when you only sell with one shoe, who's going to buy it? You know what I mean. Harry, in the as it was video, did you get dizzy at all? Uh, I did get dizzy actually quite a bit. It was. Uh, yeah, stop showing the freaking doll. We get it. I know. <laughs> it's absurdist humor. I keeps well, cutting they, and like leaving it on the screen for too long. They're doing that on purpose, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the the disc definitely during rehearsal when I first kind of started rehearsing it. It was pretty. Um, it was pretty strange to get used to. But it was fun. It was a lot of fun. And then when we shot it, we didn't do too many takes. It, was, it wasn't it was too bad. But rehearsal, I got really dizzy. And here you are at Coachella. Here I am at Coachella, yeah. I'll put this down. Yeah, please do. I'm very aware I was holding it. Harry Styles, I have a gift for you. In this package shipped from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, do you have a Fleetwood Mac mirror? I don't have a Fleetwood Mac mirror, but now I do. What do you think? The Fleetwood Mac rumors. There is Stevie. He's getting legit gifts, man. Like, what do you get a guy who has money to buy anything? This kind of stuff. I think he legitimately kind of likes this. Why would Harry even think of buying this? But now that he has it, I bet you think, oh, this is kind of interesting. It's weird, different, and why not? There's Mick. There she is. There he is. Photographed by Herbert Worthington III. Mick for Shroom Bloom. Yes. He's kind of like a wizard. He is like a wizard. Yeah. He's, uh, he's kind of... I feel like he's self-free as a as a man and, and kind of has always been that way. So I feel like he was a very, um, very kind of like perfect embodiment of what pleasing is about to me anyway. How does the pleasing pen work? The pleasing pen works by it pen. kind of... You know, it, it rolls on your lips. It's like an oil. It's hydrating. Then the other side goes under your eyes and it's like a hydrating serum you know post flight in the morning you know deep puffs yeah well i have a gift for you regarding mick fleetwood from 1973 some fleetwood mac what has mick told you about that era of fleetwood mac like 73 he hasn't told me a lot i read his book though play on um which i mean all i mean the whole story is I find to be so fascinating. I've never seen an eight-track cartridge. This is amazing. This is really cool. See, you need a special player to play that, but amazing stuff on eight-track. An early Fleetwood Mac, not totally Peter Green era, uh -huh. but it's like 1973. Thank you so much. No problem. I know you're into the Mac, so I thought I would bring an eight-track. Love the Mac. Thank you. No. See, you know, the guy does his homework. You know, he might be silly or eccentric or different, but the guy did his homework. He knows that Harry likes Fleetwood Mac, obviously Stevie Nicks, and that's old school mm -hmm. Fleetwood and got him an eight track. You and I, we've used eight tracks in our life. I have used it only in the car. That was the only the car. The car used. was the eight track. Yeah. Yeah. But we actually had an eight track stereo, so I had both, but it was oh. commonly in the car. We um, had one. We just didn't have any eight tracks to play. <laughs> you know what? It's funny here. I'm reading here that Nathan has this interview is going on too that. 
this guy's Canadian, so you know, kind of getting the shtick. Like we get it. Like Jim mm-hmm. D. Glick is ironically Martin Short's character, who's Canadian, and Harry is British. And but there's that kind of commonality with that kind of weird humor that Brits and Canadians have. That mm-hmm. you know, a lot of Canadians are Monty Python fans, for example. I'm reading here that he's actually has upset a lot of other celebrities with his interview styles. I and can see it. People from Sonic Youth, Alice Cooper, Henry Rollins, Travis Barker, Lydia Lunch, Harlan Ellison, Beck, Nas. He's been hung up on. He's been verbally and physically threatened. He's been intimidated. Oh, and he's, he was eventually, he was assaulted by David Roundtree of Blur. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine being so in your own ass, excuse my French, that you couldn't take it? Like, I, this will give full credit to Harry. Like, he's like one of the biggest stars in the world, obviously. Mega millionaire, amazing star, and he just takes it in stride and has fun with. Just have fun with it. I mean, I'm sure his people prepped him, but to the degree of like, just play along and have fun. Mm -hmm. But some of these other stars that I listed here, they're so in their own butts about their image that they couldn't even fathom. I can't play along with it. I can't be bothered with this weirdness. Where Harry says, "Just play along and have fun." A fellow Canadian actually said this. This person described Narwar's interview as, quote, best that I've ever done in my entire life. And that was done by Drake. Oh, really? Drake? Yeah. That's an artist we know nothing about. No, but who, who is what? Nothing. Canadian. So Interesting insight. I don't know. Maybe nobody cares, but I find it. Yeah. I like to get some of the background of this. Right now, we're at Coachella. Do you remember wearing a Cribs t-shirt, the band The Cribs from yeah. Wakefield, England? It was black, and it was pink on the front that said The Cribs. And it had like a picture of, it's maybe like an animal, some sort of animal on it or something. Well, I have a gift for you, a Cribs LP. Cool. Jeez. Ryan from The Cribs said, apparently they were maybe going to write some songs for One Direction. Yeah, that was, I think, in... Um, the guy does his homework, that's for Maybe sure. like 2012, 2013 or something, I think. I had a couple of friends who were friends with him, I think, and we we spoke to him about writing something. I don't think it ended up happening, but yeah, I like the Cribs. I haven't listened to them for a while, so this is so, great. Some Cribs for Harry Styles. How much, thank you. You also have recorded at Peter Gabriel's studio? Yes, uh, yeah. Real World in Bath knew that. in England. We did some of this album there. We did some that. of the last album there. Um, it's a great studio, and uh, they're always very nice to us there, so very much enjoy it. And Harry, I have a gift for you right here, an original 1983 promo poster from Peter Gabriel. Wow. Nice smoke. So that's why it's so, you know, like this Darwar. You see what he's doing there? No, it's hilarious. It. The way he's shoving his mic in Harry's face, like it's not necessary, but that's the Narwar character. Watch how he shows the microphone. And, uh, Harry's giving a genuine response here to the uh, poster, which is cool. But then mm-hmm. watch how Narwar shoves the mic in his face. An original 1983 promo poster from Peter Gabriel. Wow. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> it's pretty good. So, I guess when you go to the studio again, you can hang it up. And he's there. He is there, yeah. I'll uh, thank you so much for this. Oh, sure, no problem. And actually, on that tip, I also have a 1983 promo LP, white label wow. promo by Peter Gabriel. Like, not for. Uh, not Where's Narwar? Okay, Narwar, I, I like you, dude. Now you're winning me over a little bit because you're very gracious here. But hold on to some of this stuff. Like <laughs> this is legit stuff that like Harry's getting, right? Like you know. But again, what do you get? A, what do you give a king who has everything? I don't know. I guess this kind of stuff. This is incredible gifts. Yeah, a for sale, a rare promo. This is amazing. See, where did you find this? Yeah. Well, you are Harry Styles. We have to find stuff. Thank you. This is a, like a, a wonderful sweep of gifts in this. I'm so happy you enjoy them. Thank you very uh, much so. And right now we're here in Coachella. And what can you say about Mike behind the camera? Uh, well, Mike and I, I've worked with Mike for uh, 11 years, 11, 12 years. A long time. 11, 12 years. And, um, and finally, 
Finally, Mike is on the camera. <laughs> and actually... Mike pops up in any random cities around the world, I'll see him in random places. Going way back, what can you explain about this photo right there, taken by Dana from Teen Vogue? What exactly is going on there? Can you explain to the people? So this is... Uh, <laughs> this is... <laughs> Um, a show, I, I, I'd be lost to find which city it would be in, but it was a One Direction show, and we did Human Pyramid, and there is Mike <laughs> on the bottom, which I'm thrilled that you found this. I'm sure Mike is not, but I am thrilled. Uh, um, Mike, what do you remember about that photo? We're looking at you. I remember being just as embarrassed as I am now. <laughs> was it hard to hold up? Was it hard to hold everybody up? It was, it was. Mike had a lot of responsibility. Pyramid's so stupid. I'm always on the bottom. You know what I mean? I'm always on the bottom. Yeah. I gotta support the rest of the guys. Bloody, didn't he? Yeah, my knee is somewhere between his mid and lower back. Yeah, so that's what I happens. Apologize. The knee goes to your With back. Elvis it's Presley, Harry. There's never enough. There's never enough. Elvis is there. It's hard to get to enough. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> I go kind of in and out of big, big sweeping moments of just Elvis, and then. I'll put him down for a while, and I'll go back to it. Put him down for a while, go back to it. Well, here we go. Another bent on Elvis. The Elvis interview tapes from 1957 from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. An interview record. What do you think about interview records? I don't know that I've ever seen an interview record. Well, before the internet, Harry, and obviously yeah. uh, that's how they store process. things. They stored it on records and they was and tapes and stuff. You can find them on YouTube now. I bet you that is probably on YouTube, but still, it's pretty cool. It says it's a press conference. Oh, funny. Okay. So the Elvis tapes, DJ Red Robinson from Vancouver, Canada, nineteen fifty-seven, interviewed Elvis. Look, they're Scotty too. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, no problem. And actually, with that actual theme, we continue on. Some Elvis <laughs> gum. Check this out if you open it. Maybe don't eat it. How old is this? It says on there, like, 1983 or... Yeah. But pretty cool, like the album covers. Amazing. What do you think about gum <laughs> with cards? I like gum with cards. I like gum. I like cards. <laughs> I like gum with cards. Because I was looking, and I actually found these One Direction cards oh, without gum. <laughs> we missed the gum. We missed the gum. That was a, There was an opportunity there to put some gum with this. That gum was always that powder. It had that powder on the outside of oh, it. Yeah. And it was, yeah, like, it was it like breaks in half, and it's like... I know. But you know what? I put it in my mouth and I ate it. Oh, that first, oh, yeah. the first three seconds is the best flavor blast ever, and then it just yeah. goes, and, it's and then it's gone immediately. Yeah, and we missed it. And I was thinking, like you performed a One Direction song the other day, and I was thinking about gum, like you love gum. Did you get much feedback from the One Direction toothbrush? This, this is a classic. <laughs> Did you get I... feedback from the toothbrush? Yeah. It really cleaned a lot of little girls' teeth on tour. Actually, that sounds terrible. I didn't mean it like that. I don't know why they... Sorry. But, um, um, I, did I personally get a lot of feedback? Like gum, brushing your teeth. What do you think? What Do you, do you remember anything about the One Direction toothbrush? I yeah, the batteries are dead. I remember um, have it using one for a brief moment. And I think it made a noise, didn't it? Had music in it, yeah. This battery, yeah, I think so. I was afraid to like open it up. Sense, yeah. it's been a long time. It makes sense that this doesn't look at Liam. You see Liam? Oh, look at Harry's mid like before his hair is like in between his hair growing. This must be like first album One Direction stuff. Yeah, they look like kids. What? Yeah. But I don't know that there was any sort of warranty or anything given, so I think we're in the clear. <laughs> Is there a statue of you, Harry, in Redditch? I don't think so. Is there? I, I thought possibly there is an actual statue. Are there any Harry statues out there that you know of? Not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. Not. I know. I mean, there was a there was a wax one in Madame Two Swords, but I thought that was melted at one point. Is it still around? It seems. I think it was melted recently, which seems... For who? Like, they exchanged you for somebody else? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they melt and then 
just we reuse the wax yeah. for someone we else could. or if they melt and it goes into I don't know a wax pot of you know for general wax use yeah I think it was melted it, it's that's probably it's fair it's probably about time it was yeah. it was melted down as it was kicks off with a sample yes it does and I thought perhaps for a future record and I have another gift for you you could sample London oh wow like Big Ben. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big Ben uh, recently revealed again. And the tube as well, like a whole bunch of samples. Would you consider that? Like sampling some London sounds of this London 1967 record. I would. You and he cut kind of so he's, he's like, he break yeah, he, yeah, he broke a little bit. He's like, yeah. would you consider sampling the sound of Big Ben? He bought him a record of the sounds of London. You put that on your record From, like, player. The 50s or the 60s. Ding ding. What's some other British sounds you'd have? I don't know. Teeth hitting each other? I don't know. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> it would be the sound of eating fried foods. Oh, fried food. Yeah, a lot of fish and chips. Hello, governor. I'm speaking British. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, 1930s <laughs> British guy? Is that you? <laughs> Uh, I, you know what? I don't care anymore. People can hate us. I actually don't care anymore. Who cares? <laughs> I'd also be intrigued to hear the voice of Reggie Brooks to see if I would want to use him in anything. But taxis and omnibuses, maybe. Horses I could use. Boxing crowds might work. And maybe conversation in a pub. So combine that with the fuzz box. I want to hear this too, actually. Maybe I'll put fact. He missed the fuzz box. Again, oh. that's what they were. Oh, t- <laughs> you, Nate, yeah. you know what? We gotta be. Yeah. Nate, we have to be serious here. There's no talking about fuzz boxes. We're not gonna make any jokes about that. That's that's horrible. I wouldn't even consider. Well, we're sitting at twelve. Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> they came back. People came, came back. back. Oh no! Fuzz box again. <laughs> fuzz box. Okay. <laughs> Three sounds through the fuzz box. Oh, that'll be good. Thank you. Orville Peck, Harry Ween. Yes. Yeah, he was amazing. He was really great. From Vancouver, BC. Oh, yeah? Canada. And I have a gift for you right here. Orville Peck's first band, New Sensei. And you can actually pull out the booklet right there. There he is on drums. Wow. Daniel on drums, Andrea on bass, and Brody on guitar. But that's a gift for you. The Emergency Room compilation, amazing Vancouver bands, circa about 2006, like White Lung, Defectors, Vapid. And what's really interesting is there is New Sensei. There he is. There he is. No how, mask. Yeah, how did you discover Orville Peck? Uh, how did I discover Orville Peck? I think my manager showed me his music. Yeah. But yeah, I think he's I think he's amazing. And he was wonderful at Harry Wayne also. It was a real pleasure to have him and play with him. Harry, winding up here, Polly the PSM. Yes. My current musical director. We found Paulie through a friend of ours. I met with him about, you know, wanted to kind of reimagine the band in a way that felt would kind of take us forward in the way that we wanted to kind of go and and kind of in the direction we wanted to be moving for the future of direction. our live shows and stuff. And, and Paulie has been an unbelievable asset to... Uh, the band and and I think the shows and um, he just cares so much I think we have the same intention behind what live music is supposed to do and he's also a very wonderful human being so that is um, it's a real pleasure to work with him Harry what's Great Budworth like? Great Budworth is very actually Nathan yes it probably is a leaf blower Uh, I listened to a podcast of of a gentleman who's from California. It's the bane of the existence there. Leaf floors mm. all over the place. So mm-hmm. there's probably a leaf floor. You're absolutely correct. Small. Um, there's a great ice cream farm that I used to go to every, basically every day of summer as a child. I'd ride my bike to Great Birds with Ice Cream Farm. I'd get a scoop of honeycomb. 
and a scoop of mint chocolate chip and then I'd cycle home and that would be the day because it was quite far and I had small legs. Harry Stalls, I think I'd like to add to the people out there at all. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for having me so much and I uh, hope you enjoy the record as much as I liked making it. That's, that's kind of it, really. Harry Styles, why should people care about Harry Styles? Why should people care? That is a question I I, I don't know that I have yeah. an answer to. Um, I, I would like to think that my intention is to make good music and uh, um, I'm really proud of this album and stuff and um, and it's definitely been my favourite one to make so far and I think it's my best one so far um, so yeah I, I, yeah, I feel pretty good about it so I hope everyone enjoys it well thanks so much Harry Styles so much keep on washing your hands in the free world and do 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 yeah All right, so thanks so much, Celeste. Obviously, we gave our reaction throughout the show. Not much more to add. I mean, yes, I was a little bit unsure about Nardwar at the beginning, but underneath the character, you could tell the guy was well-prepared, had a lot of great gifts for Harry, so that won me over as a fan of just, like, how do you give someone stuff? So it's pretty legit. Like, Harry's done a lot of interviews. So that's going to probably be up there for even for Harry's memory of, like, those are legit gifts. There was a thoughtful, like, what would Harry like gifts? And the guy did his research. So I don't know his team talking to another person. I don't know, because Harry seemed legitimately surprised by the gifts. So he talked to somebody to get, you know, from the emergency room band, all this other stuff, and obviously his love of Fleetwood Mac. And So the guy did his homework, so you got to give him absolute credit. Characters, you know, it's a tad annoying, whatever. You just have fun with it. You don't punch him or anything. You just play along. Harry did it perfectly. As we said before, Harry is absolutely media savvy. He can handle any situation. He's got grace and charm. He looked really good there. Yeah, I like Harry. I mean, he's a great guy. I actually just, I think he's just an A-plus guy. He really is multi-talented, good with the media, self-deprecating himself. Doesn't take himself seriously, I should say, in that sense. But he goes with the flow. You'll never hear about this on Wikipedia. Harry Styles walked out in the interview. Like, eh, no. Yeah, that's so true. Yep, he's a uh, is all around great human being. Yeah. Uh, Nardwar is, in my opinion, yeah, all right. well, he's Nardwar. All... There's Nardwars all over the world. I do appreciate the fact that we got to see Harry again, hear about yeah a few of the things that he's he's doing, but also like to see him respond to a very. It's not like he's hostile. It's it's a bit that he's playing, and then Harry didn't get sucked into any of the like. Not their attempts, but any of the things that normal people would find very annoying. Yeah, he just kind of rolled a bit. Yeah, yeah, you just have to. But again, the gifts were cool. A funnier Canadian who does this is Martin Shorts. Jimmy Glick is hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. I don't know if you've ever seen those, that stuff, Nathan, but... It's, a little it, bit. A little bit. Oh, it, it's actually quite quite good. He's quite yeah. quite funny. Yeah, if you like Martin Short. Nardwar. Okay. Yeah. Nardwar. Nardwar. Hey, Celeste, you're the best. Nardwar. Everyone bless Celeste for her incredible donation to our channel. <laughs> Thanks, right. Celeste. Thanks, everybody. And uh, we will see you on the next one.